My name is Marc Sebastián Romagosa. I'm working at GTEC Medical Engineering since a long time ago. Um, this is an, well, my role in the company. Well, I'm the, the head of the clinical uh, validation or clinical research side. I'm doing, I'm designing the clinical trials that we need for, for the certification process. And I am also helping actively in the, in the regulatory uh, procedures, uh, talking with FDA, with whatever it's needed, for sure. So I have to go quick. If you have any more questions about how we do that, then we can uh, discuss it later. So the origins of the company are in Austria. This is an Austrian company that was funded by these two uh, young guys, uh, Christoph Uger in the left side and Gunther Erlinger. Um, they develop a, Q, a cool uh, biosignal amplifier when they were doing the master thesis at the university. So as you can see, this was a long time ago. Uh, they were in the University of Graz. Graz is uh, uh, the second biggest city in Austria. Um, and then this, this product was that good that they started, they built the company, they created this company. Um, this is the, the headquarters in Schiedelberg. This is a super big city with around 20 persons living there next to Linz. Linz is the third biggest city in Austria. Uh, beside this Vienna, Graz and Linz, there is nothing else in, in the countryside. But we have this small office in Schiedelberg, which is the parents' house of Christoph Huger. Now the company is super big. We are now more than 120 employees and we uh, kick out Christoph Parents and we install our desk there. No, I'm joking. We have, they, they built a really big house uh, behind that small office. <laughs> and then in this office, we have uh, the research department and also the sales department. And then we have this other office in Graz, which is the, the production area and the hardware development and all the research regarding hardware it's it's happening here so since 2011 uh, we have also an office in barcelona in this big building it's not it's not all gtech we have a small office here well relatively small i have to say uh, we are in in zona franca just behind uh fida where the mobile congress is happening so here we are focused on software development. And then I'm also physically here, but I'm working remotely with Schiedelberg because I'm, I'm uh, yeah, my, my task is more in the clinical research area. So um, we, well, the company, the company uh, was created for, yeah, developing systems, medical systems for bioengineering and medical electronics, developing, um, Amplifiers, by single amplifiers to 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 record EEG, echo, ECG, MG, or even uh, other uh, invasive methods like yeah, like echo, sorry, and and also other tissues like the electrooculography. But yeah, uh, we we create these solutions. We have we create the the, the hardware and also uh, the software to connect these devices to 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 other uh, models, making Simulink or even Python. Um, we are a private company, and we have a lot of different uh, profiles in the company, um, biomedical engineers, uh, telematic engineers, and the major part are engineers. I, I don't have to lie. And then I'm one of the of, of the clinicians there. I, I'm, my, my background is in, in clinical uh, field. And then we, we sell our products to universities, uh, research centers, um, basically uh, other research departments to other companies. Um, but yeah, now after all these years, uh, we have open office to all these blue areas that you, have, you can see here. The dark blue is the it's the office of GTEC that GTEC have offices directly on these countries, and the and the other blue it's. Uh, the distribution partners offices so but yeah let's say um we have a very good extension of of our office uh in, in the world 
So we uh, collaborate in a lot of research and development project funded by uh, Europe Commission. Um, I listed here some of them, but as you can see, um, we have, well, this, this, these European projects are big projects. I mean, I'm talking about millions of euros, uh, each one. And, and we are basically developing, developing um, new uh, EG systems combined with FNIRS, uh, some other uh, brain stimulation uh, methods like TMS or TDCS. We are also very focused on the brain computer interfaces. I, I will not explain what this means, but basically I guess that everybody knows here uh, uh, about um, Neuralink. Elon Musk, they, well, it's basically this is what they are trying to do. It's a brain computer interface system. So I'm, we are working on that since 1999. So we are uh, really an expert on that. And then we apply also our brain computer interface technology to neuromarketing or other, other, uh, other things. So we also have easy systems for assessing epilepsy or for assessing consciousness uh, in patients in coma or in Logatin syndrome patients. And we also use this brain computer interface uh, technology to, to do rehabilitation uh, for a stroke, a Parkinson, and, and uh, multiple sclerosis and other pathologies. Um, but yeah, so let's go to the, to the questions that, that we have to answer. So how to deal with the innovation issues? Um, more or less, we, we I, I didn't talk to the other people presenting, but I think that everybody is talking about the same, right? So we have three main actors here, uh, the research and development um, part, which they should have a good understanding of the real clinical environment. Uh, they, they are, by, by background, they are not prepared to, to, to know that, but they, they, they should learn that. Uh, they have to assist in the training of the clinical staff um, and the technology that they produce should be oriented to the necessity of the clinical world, not in the other way around. So it's not that I have created a really cool system and then uh, I'm looking for the best patient that can fit on, on using uh, this system. It's, it's the other way around. I have to know which is the, the problem in the clinical environment for the doctors or for the patients or for whoever. And then I have to create a solution for that problem, right? So um, I have to say that the second point, it's very often uh, a problem because we have clinicians that they want to use uh, high tech, but they don't know how to do it, especially with devices that the usability is not really easy. So it's part of the task of the research and development department to train these people. So we have the second main actor, which is the clinical validation step, or where we have uh, healthcare professionals and uh, involved in the, the development of the technology. They, they should be motivated for that. Um, yeah, we have here, uh, we talk about um, Goodman Institute, they, they are really, uh, used to, to, to have new technologies in the clinical environment, but, but this is not what happens usually. And, and, and they should also ensure an easy access to the clinical environment from the research and development team. So I'm, I'm, I'm just here in between these two, uh, two spurs, let's say. And, and, and usually it's pretty difficult to have access to the clinical uh, uh, environment and, and present them the, the system, explain them how, it, how they should use it, but then they have no time or they are not interested because you don't have uh, enough evidence to demonstrate that this is working. And what we want to do is create the uh, evidence. So it's kind of contradictory, right? So we have a lot of problems also in this, in this way. So they should um, work on that. And then from the business point of view, uh, you have to attend the necessities of, of the patients and the healthcare professionals. You should know as a, uh, from the business strategy point of view, what the, these people 
uh, a request team and then involve the end user in the development phase here. So this means if the end user is a medical doctor, they should uh, contribute in the development of the technology, or if the end user is the patient, okay, they should be here also in the development. So what do we expect from an innovation hub? Uh, basically extending relations between private companies and public research uh, centers facilitate access in the clinical setting. Uh, again, this is one of the main problems that we have here. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of products at GTEC. Uh, I would say that maybe 98% of them are CE mark and maybe 95% of them, uh, they are FDA cleared. So we, we know how, how to, to, to certify devices, but we still have problems uh, with access in the clinical settings for for clinical trials, I would really like enjoy the conversations with, for example, Alfonso, how they eat for, for having access to there, but uh, it's really a challenge. Um, then we have, I, I would like that this innovation hub should could support the training of the healthcare professionals in the use of new technologies. So, um, well, I think everybody here that had a minimum contact with the with, um, clinical environment, they, they, they can see that uh, maybe the neurophysiologist is super good doing EMGs or EEGs or whatever, but maybe when you present a system with uh, artificial intelligence uh, predictors or such things, they, they, they believe, that they, well, they see that they are a bit lost on, on this, right? So we have to train them on that and it's our responsibility. Uh, support in gaining uh, media presents. So you are doing cool things, but you cannot present these cool things to the to the to the society. So and and at least in JTEC, I guess that in all the other countries, what we want is to have an impact on the on the society and help the people that is in the street having the problem. But if they don't know us, it's impossible. And usually the media uh, like. TV or radio or whatever, they 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 say, yeah, you are doing cool things, but I cannot uh, give you the chance to to do advertisement in in my in my channel or whatever. And it's not just about advertisement, right? It's 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 more than that. It's that I want to show to the world that I can I can have a possible solution for for the problem, right? and facilitate the creation of consortia in, in for research projects. So this is also a, a very a very good thing that the Innovation Hub can do. We, we have a lot of projects and we have detected similar companies in our, with all this experience, similar companies in our, in our sector and hospitals and public res, uh, research centers. And we always work with them, but we know that we have to expand these collaborations with other entities, right? And, what do we not expect from a innovation hub? It's funny because everybody mentioned the bureaucracy. <laughs> I would say this is my main problem in, in, my, in my working time, bureaucracy. And, and we are uh, an, Aust an Austrian company, so German mentality. We have protocols for everything, even for going to the toilet. So, and, and we hate the bureaucracy that we find in this, uh, in this public, uh, uh, agencies for getting funding or, or whatever. So we, we hate really the bureaucracy, just the bureaucracy that we find outside the company. The one inside the company, we like it, uh, not everybody. Uh, so we expect that this innovation hub is not a passive entity that forgets the interaction between the different actors, because this makes no sense what they are doing. Uh, unrealistic in terms of application of the technical uh, advances in the society. So I learned in the university that there is uh, a, a, an area which is called the death valley. So you, you create nice things in the, in the lab, but uh, these things then uh, ends on, on this death valley because they don't reach the market, right? Because many, many conditions. So I think that uh, the, this in innovation hub should create a bridge to, to, to pass over this debt balance. And uh, also another thing that I don't expect from, from this innovation hub is that this is not dynamic and doesn't adapt to the changes and needs of, of the environment on, on, this, on this area. 
So I wanted to just explain shortly the, the, the case of this system. So I didn't present any system on of our company until now because yeah, I, I was really focused on, on answering the questions, but I want to use this case to explain you that, that what I expect from a from an innovation hub. This is a recovery system, this is a, a brain computer interface system. We connect the, the the brain signals to to a computer. The computer is um, analyzing the signals in real time and giving a feedback based on the on the performance of, of the patient. So we ask the patient that have uh, hemiparesis in, in one uh, hemiboid, let's say, uh, they, to, to do a movement with the paretic side. And if they cannot do the movement, so they, they cannot do the movement because because the, the, the paretic side is it's just paretic, of course. So uh, what we ask them is to imaginate the movement. So by just thinking on the movement, just doing motor imagination, we can uh, record these brain signals and detect when they are trying to activate the, the primary motor cortex. Okay, So when they are doing this, this motor imagination correctly, the system activates the, the feedback uh, devices. And then uh, the patient sees that he is doing well this motor imagination. So this is a loop of, of motor learning. We are doing neuroplasticity by repeating this exercise uh, one and a one and one more. Okay. We have the system also for the lower extremity to help a stroke <clears throat> patients and also other pathologies, as I said before. And so all this thing is medically is medical grade uh, in Europe and will be soon in, by FDA. By soon, I would say, I hope weeks. Uh, we we are waiting for the final. Uh, letter, let's see. I'm sorry, um, but and and many people uh, use this this system. I'm talking about more than maybe five thousand patients we had already, and we have centers worldwide. More than forty centers of using only this technology. Um, we have even uh, public health systems that includes this uh, therapy as a valid therapy and they use it in the public hospitals. All this therapy is reimbursed by the public uh, uh, system. But what happened in Barcelona? So in Barcelona, our recovery gym, that's what we call what we call the recovery center, it's completely empty. And it's not because the people here is not having a stroke. We have a lot of strokes every year here, right? But what is the problem here? That we cannot reach the people in the street. And when you go to the hospitals, except except uh, Goodman, sorry, Eloy, uh, Goodman is just a, a, a perfect exception because uh, we love them. But except Goodman, uh, yeah, it's a love relationship that they have with with Eloy. Uh, I'm joking, uh, but uh, but we, we like so much work with them. But but beside them, uh, all the other neurologists or all the other centers, they say, oh, this is really difficult to use. Uh, I don't know what what how to read EEG. I don't know how to put gel in these small small uh, pieces, red pieces. This is uh, they are electrodes, like uh, neuroletics show before. Uh, but we have systems that use gel and systems that don't use gel. But they and you tell them you don't need to know about EEG. The system is analyzing the EEG uh, automatically. You only need to put this uh, nice cap on the patient's head, uh, and that's it. And, and sit down the patient in, in, in a chair like that. And, and let him see, watch the, the avatar movements and, and moving the, the, the stimulating the, the, the limbs. But they still feel like it's too much for them because maybe they have no time or whatever. The setup of the system is less than five minutes. So where is the problem? It's just fair to see the new uh, things happening near to you, right? Uh, people believe that this will, uh, this system particularly will uh, kill the some professions like physiotherapy or occupational therapy and this is for sure not sure not true at all uh we are just trying to go further in the rehabilitation in this in this case right so what we expect from an innovation hub is that uh, somebody uh, can understand what we are do we doing and bring our technology uh to to the people that's it uh, and it's super easy and i have another case so we have a system that allow us to have communication with people in coma. So sounds incredible, right? Uh, or in locked in syndrome patients. And and the people doesn't doesn't believe us. <laughs> it's just they, they only need to to 
to visit us one day and they will see that this is possible, right? So it's what we expect from, from this innovation. Hub. Thank you.